something that's always intrigued me, and something I've been interested in getting for quite a long time now, is one of those server rack mountable LCD consoles with built-in keyboard and mouse. Looking on YouTube for videos about these things, there doesn't seem to be much information at all out there, in fact there's hardly anything. So I thought I'd make a video about this subject myself, seeing there's no information out there, and talk about some of the problems I had getting a cable for this, to connect a VJ input along with a keyboard and mouse because the cable that you need to connect from this unit here into the PC so that you can use that integrated keyboard and mouse and the VJ input is not standard. These integrated LCD consoles come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and from lots of different manufacturers. Um, you can get them in 4x3 which is what I've got here and you can get widescreen versions as well. But that tends to make the visible viewing area a lot smaller. I think the thing that appeals to me with these is the fact that they completely fold down flat and the complete unit can slide out forward to reveal the keyboard and the screen. An absolute brilliant space saving design. That could be hidden under a worktop or in a small area if you don't have much space and you can just pull it out when you need it. Some examples will come with a built in KVM system which allows you to plug in multiple computers and select the input you want to look at. My example here has a single input on the back. I also have a KVM switching unit if I ever need to use it. I bought this unit here on impulse, not doing my research first, and found out the hard way that the VJ input on the back is not standard. I'll talk more about this later. So let's take a closer look at the unit that I bought, at its features and benefits, and later on in the video we'll have a look at the menu systems and have a look at the picture quality. The brand name on this unit is APC by Schneider Electric, and the model number is APC AP5717. I guess the 17 denotes the screen size because that's what it is, 17 inches. A quick Google search online still finds this unit for sale today and I can't believe the price, $1,600. I also found it on a site here in England selling it for just over £1,200 including VAT. I had no idea these things were that expensive, I only pay £35 for mine, posted. Thankfully the instruction manual is still available for this. So let's have a quick look at these specifications, shall we? So it looks like there's two models of this, a 17 inch and a 19 inch. Maximum screen resolution is 1280 by 1024, 75 hertz. Lower screen resolution is 640 by 480. It says here power consumption is 18 and a half watts. On another site it said it was 30. The USB input on the front is just version 1.1. You would think it would be at least version 2, being how recent this is. But I suspect this model has actually been made for a number of years. Interestingly, this manual here is not showing how many colours it can display. On another manual I found it says 16 million. It was a brand of um, electronics made by a company called Schneider in the late 90s, early 2000s here in England, but I'm pretty sure this isn't the same company. Back then they made a lot of cheap CRT television sets you would find in your local supermarkets. So across the front there you have your menu buttons, um, up and down, left and right, exit, and the menu button itself. LCD power on or off, standby, that lights up a kind of a yellow colour. And next to that is a little phone type socket, a phone cable socket, that says upgrade. And there's a little switch there that says firmware upgrade, recover or normal. And you have a very nicely presented keyboard with numpad on the side. The usual three LED indicators on the top for your keyboard, along with a reset button. And a laptop style mouse pad. I do like the grey colour scheme on this. Interestingly, the company that sold me this put the wrong model number on the side there, which really confused me actually when I was looking for the cables for this, because they also included the incorrect model number on the eBay listing. But looking at how they packed this loose in a box with absolutely no protection, I'm not surprised they got the label wrong. Around the front of the unit you have a green power indicator and a USB port. This is actually just a USB pass-through that comes out of the back of the unit, so this can go to your computer so you can plug a USB flash drive in. Around the back you have a standard 3 pin kettle lead input for the mains, 100 to 240 volts, and a nice rocker switch for the power. And interestingly there's also a grounding screw, you would think the squeeze that attaches to the actual rack would be enough. And on the right there you have a USB output, which will carry the USB input from the front to your computer. And last but not least that strange BJ input that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, marked PS2 USB CPU. This is a 18 pin affair, whereas a standard VJ input is just 15 pins. And interestingly this is not a blue input, it's yellow which should be a big giveaway. 
I plugged in a standard VGA input cable to this and got a picture up on the screen perfectly, but I couldn't get the mouse and keyboard to work. I thought that that USB up on the back there was for the USB keyboard and mouse, but it isn't. So after doing loads of research and putting the wrong model number in on the internet to try and find the right cable for this, because the computer monitor was labelled up wrong, and when I eventually put in the correct model number for the uh, unit, I eventually found the right cable. But unfortunately I already bought one cable before this that wasn't right, even though it had the two PS2 cables coming out of the BGA output. As you can see here you've got the PS2 keyboard and mouse and the USB output coming out of the VGA end of the cable and the other end is 18 pin, yellow to match the socket. So I'm pleased to say once you plug that uh, blue end into the computer along with the uh, USB or the PS2 keyboard and mouse you then get the functionality of that built in keyboard and mouse. And the model number of this elusive cable is A102L-5302UP KVM PS2 USB VGA CPU console lead 2 meters. And incidentally you can get longer lengths of these cables if you need them. So let's have a look at the build quality and the mechanism that aids this rack mount system to slide out. This is a very heavy unit weighing at 15 kilos so it's going to need a very good sliding support mechanism. Basically it's the same kind of drawer runner system you would have on the chest of drawers or kitchen drawers. And on both sides here you have a little locking switch that lets you push the drawer back inwards to its closed position. And there you have the Z bar that contains the cable from the front to the back. And there you have the ball bearing runners. It collides very freely. The build quality is just absolutely excellent. But then for $1600 it should be. The width of this unit, the racking sides, is 43 centimeters or 17 inches. Fully extended, I think I had it fully extended here, it measures 102 centimeters or 40 inches. So it comes out quite far. Something I like to do on my videos is have a look inside things, see how well they're made and how they're put together. And for $1600 I really want to see what's inside of this thing to make it that expensive. Because it can't just be the build quality. There are 10 screws on the back of this to get into the power supply area where the cables connect. Let's have a look. Well, a lot more in here than I thought there would be. On the right hand side they obviously have the power supply. And on the left hand side you have the display driver. The power supply looks very uh, clean and tidy. No scorch marks or anything from any heat, so I don't think it's had a lot of use. Very thick wiring loom there with the protective cover for the display itself. This will be carrying power as well. A lot of surface mount technology here. A couple of spots there for some uh, other components, capacitors by the looks of it. Got some integrated circuits here along with a microcontroller. One of these will be an IC controller for the integrated USB keyboard and mouse. Amongst a lot of tiny surface mount capacitors and resistors. I think I can see a date code there on that rectangular package. Month 10, year 23. So 2023. Although I could be wrong. Again everything looks very clean and tidy in here. Let's take a look behind the LCD panel and see what's going on in here. Again very tidy looking, no scorch marks anywhere. Nice and clean. Here's a close up of the uh, display board there. Inverter board. I'm pleased to say both the plugs on this one look absolutely fine compared to that uh, LG one I worked on a little while ago. Some nice neat cabling, nice and clean and tidy. I guess this thing is actually airtight really, once the lid's on. There is no uh, fans on this or any ventilation whatsoever. And here we have the menu board PCB where all the buttons are and the little telephone input there on the right for the firmware update. I've not spotted the buzzer. As you turn this on, it makes a beeping sound which I find quite annoying. When you switch it on you get the LCD console image come up on the screen there and then if there's no signal it will shut down. And this is where I've decided to use this, in my living room, hidden away. As you can see it's quite discreet. Let's have a quick look at the menu system of this, there's not much in here. So starting from the bottom you've got reset, on screen display duration, language, colour temperature, V position, H position, clock, phase, contrast and brightness. And at the top there it's showing the current display resolution of 1280 by 1024. So what am I going to use this for? Well I've got a lot of old retro computer games I like to play now and again and I'm also going to connect this to my media center and I also use it as a remote desktop connection for my servers. 
got a bit of gameplay here for the Vice City. I'm not put the audio on because I will be using the headphone jack on this computer so I can uh, play this in peace and quiet without disturbing anybody else. The picture quality of this monitor is actually very good. It doesn't look great here because I've had to soften the focus slightly to stop that weird effect and flickering you get when you're filming off an LCD screen. And there you have it, the APC AP5717 LCD console with the integrated keyboard and mouse. The build quality of this thing is absolutely amazing. I'm really glad I bought it. I was in two minds at the time because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to use it when I noticed that weird D-plug. But once I got the right cable, it all worked well. And I think I'm going to find this very useful going forward. Like I mentioned in the video, it's very discreet looking and it can be hidden away easily. Well, I hope you found that interesting and hopefully it will help somebody else out there if they end up buying one of these things. Now you'll know which cable to use. Uh, as I said before at the beginning of the video, there's hardly any information out there at all regarding these console monitors. And they all seem to use different ways of connecting computers to them. Well, I guess that just about uh, wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching. And until the next video, I'll be seeing you. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you may want to take a look at some of my other videos on similar themes. I'm always buying something on eBay, some old piece of technology and trying to repair it. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Thank you.